Hello and welcome to this video which is about the range selection tool. So just for the avoidance of doubt, this is the second tool on the toolbar. This is not about the tools which are available under Edit Range, which I did a video on quite a while ago, which is linked in the description. But we're talking about the range selection tool. So this is a really useful tool, but I think it's underused. Certainly in my experience of seeing students and other people, uh, I don't think it gets used as much as maybe it could do. I, I'm guilty of not using it as much as I could. It can save you quite a lot of time because it sort of combines multiple actions into one. So on screen, I've just got a, uh, a project consisting of a load of MIDI. It's the wonderful Flourish, which comes with every copy of Windows. But we just want to demonstrate how you can move things around, etc. So let's say we want to nick from bar three to bar five of this particular part for whatever reason. Now, your normal workflow would be either to grab the scissors, cut it there, cut it there, and then change back to the arrow and then move that, which would be all very well. If you've watched one of my other videos, you'd know that if you're using the arrow tool, you can hold down the Alt key and then that becomes a pair of scissors. And then at least you've got fewer changes to do but you know you still have to move your hand to the the key on the keyboard which is obviously uh, too much effort uh, you've got to change tools anyway so let's just say you were going to use the range selection tool so the range selection tool it makes selecting anything just a case of click and drag and then once you've selected it it moves into hand mode if you're above that and then you can move that out. So it does it sort of all in one, which is is quite nice. But there, there's fortunately, there's more to it than that. So we're just going to look at a few of the other things you can do. So first things first, if you've made a selection, if you want to extend it, if you move your mouse over the end, you can extend it. You can see I've got snap turned on at the moment. But if I turn snap off, it would just flow freely as you would expect. If you've got snap turned on and you don't want to have to turn it off, if you hold down the command or control key on your keyboard, you can see on screen I've got snap turned on, but it's doing it wherever I want. So that sort of overrides it, which is, is quite useful. So you can fine tune it to whatever you need, or you can just snap it, but you can see there, I can extend that selection and make it as large or as small as I want. You can also do it a different way. So if you're outside of that range, if you hold down the command or control key, so let's say we wanted to extend it to bar six, if I just held down the command or control key, I can do that. So if you've got a really long selection you want to do, you can scroll a long way and then do that. So let's just do that now. You can see, make it nice and easy, or you could even move and then zoom in and then get it really precise. So it gives you plenty of options. So the, the command or control key is dual purpose in that respect. The tool doesn't stop there though. There are also the option to select across multiple tracks. So this is where really it comes into its own because on a single track you think, yeah, I could probably do that. Yeah. But with multiple tracks, this is where it's really useful, particularly if you've got something in a block. So cutting in here, really you would have to do it with lots of tool work. Whereas that, just one range selection and you can see I've grabbed that I can move that wherever I want straightforward all in one action as well so it's not if you want to undo it you're back to where you were without it being cut if you want to select across the entire project if you hold down the command and shift key as you do it you will see it selects across the entire project which is nice the problem with that, as you may have spotted, is that it doesn't obey snap anymore because we're holding down the command key and obviously there's a bit of a, a swap between the two. But once you've made your selection to roughly the right place, you can let go of both keys and then as you move over the edge, you can make it snap to whatever. So you see, because we're in adapt to zoom, it's snapping to sort of half a bar at the moment. Um, let's zoom in a bit more and then you can see now it's snapping like that. So that means you can select across the entire project. But let's say you didn't want to select everything. You wanted everything but one. You can do that pretty easily because, again, the command key comes to the rescue. If you click on a track where you've got it 
selected. So let's say we didn't want this jazz guitar track. We want all the others, but you know, no jazz guitar, absolutely none. We just click on there with the command or control key held down and it deselects it. If you want to reselect it, just do the same again with the key held down. So you can make any kind of range of selections that you want. We've excluded three tracks there, but everything else will get taken and moved in one seamless action. Once you're comfortable with that, and if you're the kind of person who is very precise about their mouse movements, then there is a mode which combines both the selection tool and the range selection tool. So we can have the arrow and range selection at the same time. And it's this here. So if we press this, if you're in the top half of any track, you're in range selection mode. And if you're in the bottom half of any track, you're just in normal arrow mode. So you see the tool changes. I'm going to zoom in vertically to make it a bit clearer. So in the top half of the track, I'm in range selection mode. As soon as I move to the bottom half of the track, I'm in normal arrow selection mode. This can be useful if you want to swap between the two fairly often. It works in much the same way as the uh, Omni tool in Pro Tools works, where your position on the, the track is important. It takes a bit of getting used to because if you're like me and you're a bit sloppy, initially this will annoy you because it's like, oh, I wasn't in the right mode. I, I need to be in the bottom half of the track. And if you're used to having projects with 500 tracks in, then you'll probably find this will be difficult if you're zoomed you know, to this level because you can see it just stops being in arrow mode. But then there comes a point where, yeah, this zoom, you can't do that. But if you if you want to be more zoomed out, it won't work for you. It'll just stick in arrow mode. But I think that's, once you get used to it, that's the the ultimate mode of working. I have a bit of a practice with it. You know, dedicate yourself to it for a couple of sessions and see how you get on. That's a look at the range selection tool. And as ever, I hope you found this useful. I hope our uh, algorithm overlords have found it useful and you can like, subscribe, um, do all those things, all of the things that are needed for successful platformage without making ridiculous thumbnails with me going, you won't believe what the range selection tool can do for you, uh, which is a depth to which I, I will not stoop. But anyway, um, thanks for watching to the end. Hope you found this useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.